Hi, I'm Tom Shu, and today I'm excited to bring to you our first critique. First of all, what you're looking at here is our Flickr group. For our blog, we have a Flickr group, and uh, I just made it live a couple days ago, and we've had our first image posted in it, and it was posted by Tyrell Woods. What this Flickr group is for is for all of the people that come to my blog, since we all have something in common in the blog, we kind of uh, have a common thread and we could share images here for multiple reasons one would be getting your images critiqued another reason is to get exposure for yourself and your photography as I grow as a photographer I start to get more followers uh, in my life for my photography as well as some of my tutorial stuff on my blog and I wanted to give a space for everyone that visits my blog to have a place to be exposed. Uh, Scott Bourne, who's a great friend of mine, I do a lot of assisting with him and we're working on some big projects together. He has helped me with exposure in social media leaps and bounds. Uh, when I look at the IP addresses of the people that visit my blog, I get thousands of people that visit my blog from all over the world each month that don't ever post anything but they spend hours reading the information uh, so these people are watching and if you put your photography here it's just it's another tool for you guys to get exposure and you might get a critique if you want it so let's click on this image here as you can see that this was posted by Terrell Woods and he said please critique he did it 13 hours ago so I'm getting kinda of fast on this now I can see that through the magic of digital he shot this with a 7D and I can see when he shot it now I don't want to go in and cheat and see if he did like an HDR or if he did a panorama or anything like that what I do want to do is look at this picture on its own value and draw my own conclusions I don't want to be told anything I could see based on the crop dimensions it's a panorama of some sort whether he went in and stitched a bunch of images together or he actually just cropped it with a crop tool and made it that size it makes no difference to me so looking at the image we can see that there's basically a sunset going on and there's a horizon and it's a pretty dramatic sky and if we look at this picture on this white background you see how your eyes keep wandering on the screen it's hard to look at something on a white screen and the reason is your brain is drawn to that bright area that's the same thing in an image let's click on this now we look at it on a black you see that your eyes are more relaxed but you're still drawn down to this corner even though you might be looking over here at my mouse cursor your eyes are still drawn down here to this white text before we go into Photoshop and look at some of the things that I want to talk about and some of the corrections I would have done to this image maybe I want to talk to you about the rule of thirds the rule of thirds it's a compositional rule and it's basically a rule for all visual arts it has a particular relevance when it comes to landscape photography and the rule basically states an image should be imagined as it's divided into nine equal parts there should be two equally spaced vertical lines and two equally spaced horizontal lines it'll basically make a big giant tic-tac-toe board the basic thing you need to understand is it needs to be equally spaced in each one of those intersections say so if you had a tic-tac-toe board right here this intersection and this intersection and that intersection and that intersection are all points of interest so what's the subject in this photograph what are you looking at well I think it has to do with the sunset the main thing is the sun setting right at the horizon so I think it's important to get the horizon line on a rule of thirds and maybe get the sun on a vertical rule of thirds just saying that's what I would have tried to do next thing I want to look at is a foreground and background elements so what gives a picture depth 
you know, we're working with a 2D medium. A photograph is flat. However, you look at some of these photos, they look like three-dimensional. How do they do it? Well, they use leading lines. They use foreground elements. Like this grass here. This is a foreground element. And I would have liked to see this foreground element extended all the way across the frame. I picture this particular lump of grass like right here on the edge of the frame. And I picture it not so deep into the corner, but kind of like a parallel line going across the bottom of the frame. Might have meant that I had to walk over here a little bit more to get this in my frame. And it also might have meant that this angle might have been running a little differently. Okay, also what I see is this corner down here keeps drawing my eye to it. It's not because of the angle, it's because it's brighter than anything else in the frame. You see how it's dark right here, this grass, and this is light? We can get away with putting a vignette on this frame because it's sunset. You see this big dark area right here? It's because of these clouds. I don't know why it's bright over there, but it sure is. So I don't know if this is an HDR or, or what. I don't see any haloing, but I can't really zoom in to see. So I'm not trying to inspect what he did. I'm just going to critique what he did. So you see these contrails? These are condensation trails from airplanes. These are also distracting elements. You can tell it's L.A. because there's a ton of planes in the air. Okay, so let's go into Photoshop and let's look at some of this stuff. Here's the same image inside Photoshop. And Terrell, there's no need to worry. I'm going to get rid of this image as soon as I'm done critiquing it. And uh, I'm definitely not going to keep this or try to use it. I just wanted it to express some things that I would have done differently. So there's no need to worry about copyright. This is for educational purposes. And it's called fair use. <laughs> just if you were worried. Okay. So first of all, we want to look at the rule of thirds when we're doing compositions. And inside Photoshop you can do that. If you go to File or Edit, I'm sorry, Edit and go to Preferences which is below this doggone screen and you click on the General tab, you'll see it comes up this area called Guides, Grids and Slices. Go to your grid and put a grid line every 100%. See there's a drop down menu, choose percent and in subdivisions put the number 3. Okay, now that the guides have been established, we need to show them. So if you want to know a shortcut and you don't know it, you can go down here to Keyboard Shortcuts. And if we go to View, down here on the View option, and we look for Grid, it will just tell us what the shortcut is. Grid, on the Windows computer, is Control plus Apostrophe. So let's turn it on. Control plus apostrophe. And you can see that we've got our rule of thirds. Two equally spaced vertical lines and two equally spaced horizontal lines. Kind of cool, huh? So now we see how far off, maybe, that we are from a horizon line that could have just as easily run across this rule of thirds. And that would break us up front to back. And if we rotated it around, we would have had a really interesting foreground element. And it would have kind of gave us this little cliff that we know that this, uh, this grass is taller than the beach area. Or down here, it looks like you could just step right out onto the sand. Okay, so that would have given us depth front to back. Next thing I would have done is I would have took the sun and I would have stuck it right here on this rule of thirds. And since this would have been the ocean... That means the sun would have fell right about in this area. Next thing I would have done is I'd have come in here and I'd have created some type of vignette. What I really would have liked to see done is this sand beach just run off the frame over here and again have that green foreground element extend all the way across the bottom of the screen. The reason why I say do that is because when you create a vignette, you're only doing it on a small patch instead of this whole corner. Because it's hard to get away from this distraction because I keep going back to this area on the image. So let me show you what I did. I know it's nothing like your image. It's not intended to be your image. 
all this was intended to do was to show you some compositional things that I would have done and some things I would have done to eliminate the distracting bright areas of the image. So as you can see, I've kind of rotated the image a little bit and cropped it in such a way that the horizon now runs on the rule of thirds and then I use my content aware fill and I move that sun over here to this particular area you could have done this in camera I'm just doing it in post so now my sun falls on my rule of thirds and my horizon falls on my rule of thirds and I really didn't change anything on the image we lost some of those mountains but you know you could have just captured that in post by you know turning a little bit or rotating a little less or more I mean they're still there they're just moved just for composition purpose okay the next thing I did was I cropped out those contrail lines or cloned them out they're still there a little bit but they're not that distracting you see how your eye will just go right to those white lines if you look at the sky at all your eyes just keep getting drawn over to it and to be quite honest you didn't really need all of those lines in there you could have done this as your crop let me see what's happening here make a new layer Ooh, let me hide that and you see that it really didn't take much away but again your eyes are going to this bright area that sky really doesn't do a lot for the photo was all I'm getting at let's turn back on the one that I did let me just delete that real quick so here's the photo that I that kinda I recomposed to work with the rule of thirds and this is a vignette that I created it's because my eye kept falling off the bottom of the frame and it's still doing a little bit here so let's go ahead and fix that too I'm going to grab my brush tool and I'm going to paint with white and I might do a little bit of it over here I'm going to try to darken some of that down over there let me X out some of this grass my flow is a little bit too much here. I should say my opacity just working against me for this tutorial. Then you can adjust the opacity on that vignette however you want. There it is. You can see that your eyes are just getting drug all over the screen. But I want you just to look at the sun. Maybe it needs to be a little darker here. I just kind of blink my eyes open and close. And since it's a sunset, you can get away with this vignette. So we're not doing a real high key portrait here. Just this opacity, just a little bit here. I'm not trying to kill all that greenery because that really doesn't distract you. It's just the bright areas. Before and after, there's your image. Let me get rid of these rules of thirds. There's your image, and there's what your image could have been. But imagine that green running all the way across the bottom. It would have been really slick. Tyrell, I want to thank you for offering your image up for critique. I really appreciate the courage it takes to do that. Some of the things you've heard you might not be too happy with. And you might not be happy seeing me work on your image. I'm not trying to offend you in any way. I just wanted to show you some of the things I was talking about. And do it in such a way that there was no misunderstanding. 
Well, thank you all for visiting my blog today, and until next time, we'll see you soon.